Good morning. Welcome to today's live update. We're going to do things a little bit differently this morning. I want to really just have a conversation with everyone listening today about where we are, where we've been, where we are, and where we're headed with COVID and our campus's response. We're not really going to go over a whole lot of detailed data. Uh, instead, I just want us to think together about kind of where we are with this pandemic what's yet ahead of us you know last week we marked really the one year the one year point of COVID. i was looking back at my calendar this morning and one week ago one year ago today i had been working at home for four days a year ago last week we announced to students you're heading for spring break take enough clothes to stay gone for two weeks because this virus was gaining attention in the country and we thought you might need to stay home an additional week before you came back. It wasn't long after that that the country and all of us learned how much bigger this thing was. And we then announced that uh, there were no there were no more face to face classes last spring. If you think about that, that was only a year ago. I was looking back at my calendar and there were two days last last a year ago last week where I had calls with the SEC, other presidents and chancellors. And the, the first call on Wednesday was to vote to cancel the SEC tournament. And the call the next day was to kind of pick up the pieces from the fact the NCAA tournament wasn't happening and begin talking about what would happen with all the rest of our spring sports. It was a time of uncertainty, uh, turbulence, uh, I think a lot of fear, you might say. Um, and, and if you think about what all happened, all, all of our student athletes uh, went home. Many, most of them did, and our students stayed home. Students had to come back and get their belongings out of the dorms in the summer. As we began to learn more and more about the virus and about how to protect ourselves and how to stay safe, we began implementing all sorts of um, mitigation efforts on campus, all the cleaning we did, all the uh, preparation then for fall when we felt like, well, we could come back to campus, but we would have to be socially distanced. We would be wearing face coverings. And we had a successful fall. We did that. Our enrollments were up uh, and we we made it through the fall. It took the effort of everyone, faculty, staff and students. I think about everything the faculty did over the summer to get prepared for how you really use uh, Zoom effectively for virtual learning, how you design other types of asynchronous courses. We were busy trying to stay true to our mission in this world of uncertainty. Staff were working from home, students were home, <laughs> plans changed, uh, internships that didn't happen. We had to make some excruciating decisions in, in late spring, such as canceling face-to-face -face commencement. But we began doing what volunteers always do, which is move forward, figure out, pick up, our, pick up the pieces and keep going. We had a successful fall. Um, there were points at which, um, you know, our numbers went real soared after students came back, but students, faculty, the whole campus staff responded as we needed to. And I can't say enough for our students for how they amended their way of living and came to class with their masks on, learned to take courses by Zoom. And by December, we felt confident enough to hold commencement face to face. 12, 12 ceremonies, people socially distanced, but we began to find our way in, in the midst of COVID. So here we are now, mid-semester, mid, we're at the midpoint, students have pretty much finished their midterm exams, the weather's warming up, the vaccines are, are becoming more and more available. I've, had, I've been vaccinated, my husband's been vaccinated, I can't encourage enough for people when it's time when it's your turn to get the vaccination. I'm looking forward to seeing my children again. I haven't seen my family like all of you. I haven't seen family members in over a year. 
So we do begin to see the light at the end of the, the tunnel. And every day I see another person who's been vaccinated and the relief that people are feeling is enormous. So we're feeling good. We're moving outside with activities. Uh, we've been a, we're about to begin. If you, if you stop and think about it, we were able to have a football season, uh, got those games in, couldn't have the big crowds in the stadium. We were about to begin the NCAA tournament. Mo both of our men and women's teams are there. Our other sports are all active and doing well. And every single one of those athletes and coaches are continuing with all the mitigation to make sure that they can play. They're, they're in Indianapolis or they're in San Antonio in hotel rooms, staying safe, eating the food that's prepared for them, not going out, going to practice and then going back to the hotel rooms. So this virus is still with us. And that's kind of what I want to speak to today. We've been so pleased this semester that our numbers have been low. A week ago, our numbers of positive cases on the campus were in the 30s. And that was very, that's very exciting. Like no more than 35, I think it was a week ago today, 35 in total. Today, the number's over 60. That, that unnerves us a little bit. So we're very much, we're being very cautious about, we're still with this virus and we don't want to see the numbers come back up again and, and have another surge. We have announced some clusters over the last few days. Um, and all of this information, of course, is on our website. We've announced some clusters and, and every single one of them are tied to specific gatherings. And that's something we hadn't seen in a while. So we're paying close attention. National experts are talking about how this moment in COVID is really critical. Uh, all of the experts have, have been in just concerned that March not be a month when the numbers surge again. So as much as we want to get back to normal and do all the things we miss, and that is understandable, I feel exactly the same way. We are getting so close to being there. We're getting so close. But to get there, we've got to finish this and we've got to finish strong. And so I'm pleading to, with all of the students, our students, many of them, even though we didn't declare a spring break, I know students are, have traveled because their co courses, many of them are on Zoom. You'll be coming back to campus. Let's come back to campus with care. If you think you need a test, if you think you've been exposed, we want you to go to the health center and check it out. Um, let's finish strong. Let's do this the right way. We've come so far. Just thinking back to where we were a year ago, where we were in the fall, and where we are right now, the light is at the end of the tunnel. But we've got to continue to take measures to be safe. So what can we do? What do we need to do over the next few weeks? It all matters. We've only got something like six or seven weeks until we get to commencement. And as you know, we're planning a face-to-face -face commencement. It will be safe. It will be socially distanced. Everybody will be six feet apart and people will be wearing face coverings, but we'll be together and we'll be celebrating for the first time in Neyland Stadium. And students have seemed to be really excited about that. We need to keep our numbers low. So to the students, and if there are parents are listening, I want you to help me motivate the students we need to continue to do the saliva testing. It, it's a sacrifice, just a little bit. Every morning you need to spit in that too. But it makes a big difference because we can quickly, and we've been able to do it, quickly isolate where the virus is, who's got it, get that person set up in isolation space so it doesn't spread. We need more of our residents participating. The numbers have dropped, the percentage of numbers. And I know why it's happening. People feel like, well, the vaccination's here, you know, it's spring, it's not as bad. Please continue to do the testing. We need more residents participating. So the saliva testing is required of every student living in either a dorm or in a Greek, Greek house. So all university housing, that's a requirement. And it has been working. 
we've been able to isolate the case quickly, remove that case, and let everybody else continue to live to live in the space. So please, I'm asking for your help with this. It's only a few more weeks. The second thing is to continue to wear your face coverings. If you walk out without it and someone sees you, point it out to them, where's your mask? People do that to me when I step outside my office. I still forget at times, uh, but we take care of each other and that's what volunteers do. I wanna encourage you, the weather's great. Well, there's been a little bit of rain, but spend time outside. It's so much safer out there. The tents are still up, you can study, eat your meals out there, have events out there, get together with your friends, keep the gatherings small, stay outdoors and wear your mask. If we do these things for the next six weeks, we can get to a commencement in Neyland that we're all excited about. And as soon as you are eligible, eligible. I encourage you to get vaccinated. I was on a call the other night with a, a bunch of uh, leaders from all of our Greek houses. And I was surprised that any number of them had already been vaccinated. So it's happening. People are, it's becoming more and more accessible. So when it's your time and when you see an available opportunity, I encourage you to do that. So let's think about moving forward. As you know, we've announced plans for a fully in-person fall semester. We did, we did this based on listening to experts, uh, following guidelines, and we've done that all throughout the COVID, and we will continue to do that. Obviously, if something happened and there was a huge surge this summer, we would pull back from that. But right now, we feel confident that with the coming vaccinations, the coming warm weather, uh, and, the, and the light at the end of the tunnel uh, that we're all hearing about and seeing, we feel confident we can do it. But, but no, we've learned so much during this experience. If we had to pivot quickly to online courses for a brief time, we know we can do it. We don't think we're gonna have to do that. So we are planning full capacity and I couldn't be more excited about that. I can't wait to get back in the classroom myself. Uh, we're going to continue at the beginning of this whole effort. We, we laid out three values that we have used every day, and we're going to use them every day as long as I'm chancellor here, even post-COVID. And they are to be creative, to be compassionate, and to be flexible. We know we've learned a lot. We know we can be agile. We have been agile. We know we can be flexible. And I want to encourage people to continue to be creative, find creative solutions to the challenges that confront us. We, we've done it now for a year and we're gonna to continue to do it going forward. And I wanna encourage everyone to continue to be compassionate and to be flexible. I'm confident we can do this. My confidence is based on what we've done so far and the attitude and spirit of everyone who's been part of making this truly one of the best places in the world to be getting a college degree in the midst of COVID. So we are really close to the turning point in this pandemic. The decisions we make right now, every single one of us on a daily basis will impact the months to come. I'm so eager to see my children and they're eager to see me, but we're, we've come this far, we're not gonna blow it now by being careless or reckless. And I implore you to do the same thing. So Vols, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of what we've done here on this campus. Let's keep our nose to the grindstone, take this a little bit further with care and safety measures, and we're going to get there. And next year, next fall, is going to be a happy, joyful reunion to uh, a college campus life that we're all dreaming of again. So I want to thank everyone for joining me today. If you want a closer look at the numbers, go to the website. You can see the breakdown of the, the data that I shared with you. Students, be safe, be careful study hard. Let's get to the end of all of this. And I look forward to seeing each and every one of you. Thank you.